Senator Casey, turn to Senator Collins. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Secretary Sue, welcome. First, let me say that I believe that every member of this panel would agree with you that unemployment insurance is absolutely critical to individuals who have lost jobs through no fault of their own. However, there can be no excuse for the kind of rampant fraud uh, that has been so prevalent in California. Now, I recognize that there has been UI fraud across the country, including in the state of Maine, but the sheer scale and scope of the fraud in California not only dwarfs that of every other state, it's estimated to be at least $11.4 billion in fraud, but also seems to be directly related to directives that you issued. Um, and these fraudulent payments are incredible. $21,000 payment to our colleague, Senator Dianne Feinstein, $800 million worth of payments that were, it went to prison inmates, 1,700 claims from a single address, yet they were paid. So you gave a confusing answer, in my judgment, to Senator Burr about the directives that you issued. So I pulled up a press release that your department issued, and it says very clearly that you sent a memorandum to the Employment Development Department Director directing that department to temporarily suspend unemployment eligibility certifications. So in other words, they're paying UI benefits before determining if the applicants are eligible. You also directed the agency to temporarily stop collecting eligibility certifications from claimants. Now, the U.S. Department of Labor did not waive those requirements, and a California state audit found that your directives jeopardize the integrity of the system. So, do you disagree with the state auditor and with the federal requirements? Why did you take those actions? Why did you jeopardize the integrity of the system? Thank you, Senator. And I appreciate um, in the hearing for uh, Mayor Walsh, you really laid out what was sort of the perfect storm in unemployment insurance benefits, right? The massive spike in claims on the heels of really record low levels of unemployment. You know, when the pandemic hit, unemployment insurance funding was at a 50-year low nationwide, along with uh, with with technological challenges or failure to invest in technology. And layer on top of all of that, the fraud um, really created, again, like a perfect storm um, of challenges. First, to your point about California. It's true, California has received a lot of attention um, because we are a very large state. Uh, as I said, California has processed one in five unemployment insurance claims in the entire country, uh, more than Texas and New York combined. And we've also been very transparent about our challenges. I should note that fraud in the unemployment insurance system itself, the, the system that has to do with the um, eligibility requirements that you're talking about, in California has been, uh, even in the pandemic, in the last year, about 5%, which is comparable to what it is in years prior. It's comparable to what it was in 2019. The massive amounts of frauds that you are legitimately concerned about, I am too, uh, occurred in the pandemic unemployment assistance program, which did not have those same, uh, those, sa those same requirements. Um, and on those, the 10% that you, the $11 billion or so, which is 10% of the total payments, that 10% is about the same as what the Department of Labor estimates is the fraud nationwide on the system. Again, I'm not trying to defend it or to justify it. I am putting it in, in, in the context. Um, we also did bring in an external strike team in California to look at why there were so many, why, why there were delays in payments to dig deep and figure out what we needed to fix. And then we made that strike team report public too. So I think uh, transparency is very, very important in government. 
Um, it has raised more attention on what we're doing in California, but um, it also then you know, allows us to talk about the early and aggressive steps that we took, as I mentioned, um, to, to stop the fraud. Uh, the pandemic unemployment assistance program was more vulnerable to fraud. I say it's the you know one of the fronts in the war um, because we've all learned from again it was a balance there of wanting to get money out quickly because we needed to, um, and then once we saw the fraud, we took immediate steps. Those steps led to the same steps being taken by the Department of Labor, instructing other states to do that, and Congress also took steps, including back in December with the Continued Assistance Act, putting in more criteria before payments could be made. And so, you know, this is a front of the war that's gonna require all hands on deck. And uh, my sense is that um, on the fraud piece, because every state has seen it and it has slowed payment in every state, it's further threatened um, technological systems that were already vulnerable that we need a national approach to the national problem. And based on my first-hand experience in the trenches in California, I would bring that experience. I think you know, we need people who understand and have a clear-eyed view of what the ver myriad problems are and how they interconnect and what we can do about them to both make sure that we're making payments where needed and we are stopping fraud where we, where we need to. Well, my time has expired. I will follow up with you on these issues because I still don't think I got an answer to my question about your suspending the requirements. Thank you so 